Hello there, welcome to this week's Dividend Cafe. Another week has gone by and probably by the time you're watching this, the first quarter of 2017 will be behind us. We're taping on Thursday night, which is normally when we do tape. Friday, March 31st will represent the end of the first quarter and uh, that's when you'll be seeing this and so forth and so on. But if I were a betting man, I would say that the last week here in March will be a positive week in the markets. We're up a few hundred points on the week and so a nice little rebound in markets from where we were uh, last week where the market had the sell-off in light of the uh, Republican Party's failure to pass the Obamacare repeal and replace legislation. Uh, the thing we talked about last week that most people probably understand by now was that the market's concern was that maybe that political failure was indicative of a larger headwind uh, that we faced regarding other parts of the pro-growth Trump uh, administration agenda. And I think that this week the markets have largely rebounded and certainly settled around the idea that there may very well still be a path to some of those things uh, related to tax reform in particular, as well as some of the deregulation. If I can make a couple comments on exactly that, I would point out that first and foremost, I actually believe the bulk of the deregulation benefits that will take place for market stakeholders, those that are interested in the market impact that comes about from these deregulatory um, initiatives, most of those will not come from the legislative branch. Most will not involve the more tricky sausage making part of politics. Most will come at the executive branch level which are quite easy to implement, as a matter of fact. They're departmental within the Trump cabinet, and often from an executive order standpoint, as we learned from President Obama, it can be done from the stroke of a pen. Uh, President Obama was a heavy user of executive orders, uh, and, and President Trump is proving to be as well. So that provides a deregulation um, context to, to where we believe markets benefit. Uh, individual companies can benefit it has nothing to do whatsoever with the politics of it necessarily and what other um, complexities that that generates and and uh, kind of uh, unintended or intended consequences um, but let's move past the deregulation side to what's certainly the lower hanging fruit in the economy and what markets are expecting in the stock prices largely as a result of perceived and hoped and, and so forth uh, profitability. That is tax reform. I believe that the Trump administration has a path to implement corporate tax or business tax cuts, even apart from a comprehensive tax reform. I also believe that they may not go that path. So the political calculus here is very complicated. But when I look to why the market seems to be not responding to the failure of the Obamacare repeal replace effort thus far by concluding that the other business tax initiatives are not going to get done. I think it's either because they see, rightly in my view, that even with some of the, um, the complexity of getting there, I think they believe that the, the, the legislator, the GOP-led Congress and the Trump administration will find that path. And then the other issue, which is kind of the side I'm coming from, is that they can use the reconciliation process, only needing 51 votes, to at least implement a business tax cut and then the more comprehensive tax reform, which would require more involved process, could come later. And I suspect that there's a lot of wisdom in this expectation that the Freedom Caucus and those that kind of kept the Obamacare repeal replaced from happening, that they may not be willing to dig in their heels on the tax cut fight. So in a sense, the fear of last week has turned into the opportunity of this week that, again, this is sort of maybe what markets are kind of playing with in pricing, that maybe last week was not bad news that, that indicates that all these expectations since the election are going to uh, fail to, to uh, come, come together, but in fact they embolden or empower those initiatives um, as a result of, of the kind of lay of the land. The Freedom Caucus is very unlikely to pick another fight with the Trump administration. 
Well, I'm clearly way down a political path this week, um, but it is the singular element that has been pushing markets this week. The Fed's rate hike of a few weeks ago is well behind us. There's no discussion about another rate hike until a later meeting. I would anticipate that probably be June. <clears throat> the market is mostly in consensus view that the Fed will indeed be raising rates again. So the market's not responding right now much around monetary policy. There wasn't any big shocking economic news. There's none expected in the foreseeable future. Oil prices did rebound dramatically this week. As a matter of fact, um, oil did close meaningfully. Over $50 a barrel today had been uh, into the 47s earlier in the week. And so you're talking about a meaningful high single digit percentage move up just in a number of days. So I still think that 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 correlation with oil prices in the market is at play, and that's a factor too. But fundamentally, until we get into the next earnings season, which will kick off here in about two or three weeks, uh, with all the companies reporting in Q2 their results from Q1, right now the market's moving around political headlines. That's a fact. I have very little interest in trying to trade around it, but I do want to be positioned the right way for clients to maximize that risk and reward trade-off and I still believe that volatility should be expected, that we will see higher volatility in Q2, Q3 than we saw in Q1 and even uh, the second half of Q4 last year. And then we have higher volatility, but I do believe the market's gonna get what it's most hoping for, which is tax relief for American corporations. That's kind of where we stand now. I'm gonna leave it there for the week because I've really given you a mouthful around this topic. Please reach out with any other questions you have. Look forward to coming back to you next week. Thanks so much for listening to Dividend Cafe. Don't forget to subscribe to the podcast if you're interested. There's a lot of different information we do in our weekly podcast, uh, which is available at iTunes and SoundCloud and all that good stuff. And then, of course, reading DividendCafe.com. A lot of charts, a lot of good material this week. That's it. Have a good weekend.